Okay, so um, all right. So my my talk will be based on on two papers I've been working on, which are related to marketplaces. Uh, one one is with Andres Erbas Drane, which is specifically about vertically integrated um, um, platforms, and uh, another one which is early on in its development is with uh, with Heske Bar Isaac, which is about steering in marketplaces, what we call mediated competition. So um, kind of the, the basic framework that unifies the, the two projects has basically three important ingredients that previous speakers spoke about. And actually, I'm not going to give any, um, you know, kind of free riding on their, uh, on their efforts. I'm not going to give uh, in introduction about the importance of vertical integrated platforms and kind of the main things that, uh, that are important there. But I'm just going to mention that the kind of the framework that unifies uh, these two things that I've been working on is, um, is a monopolistic marketplace operator who can steer consumers towards designated sellers. So steering is uh, embedded in the framework. So uh, this uh, operator, which we, which we call M, collects information and fees from sellers. So this is things that um, previous speakers spoke about extensively. And finally, uh, going towards the, uh, the, uh, the kind of the title of the workshop, uh, M may be a, another seller herself. So this could be a vertically integrated uh, marketplace. So the first paper, which is almost done, combines all three, but uh, takes rather simple approach demand structure, which simplifies our steering results. And the second um, kind of uh, digs deeper into the, the steering of uh, steering world. Okay. so. How do, we, how do we understand steering? So let me give you some ingredients of uh, how, how this works. We understand it very simply as some fraction lambda of consumers who will simply follow the recommendation of the platform. So if lambda is big, steering is very important because lots of people follow the recommendation. If lambda is small, then uh, steering is not so important. Uh, you can consider uh, what we call algorithmic steering, which is the only thing that we do with, uh, with Andres, which is a situation where the platform takes prices and everything it knows about third party sellers and decides who to promote via an algorithm, which is some kind of a uh, strategic response of the platform. Or the platform may outsource this uh, to the sellers themselves via second price auction, which uh, you know, we are all familiar with and actually is increasingly common in marketplaces. I'm, I mean, it was always common in in online search, but now if you look at Amazon's website or other marketplace websites, you'll see lots of ads. This is a result of these auctions that are being run there. So uh, another important ingredient of the, of the framework is the product space where we, we are thinking about uh, independent product markets. There's continuum of them and they are characterized by some demand parameter, which is important because some markets are more profitable than others which then feeds into the optimal fee setting and so forth by them, by the marketplace. So uh, we have third party sellers and potentially also the, the marketplace itself who are selling variants of particular products who, which can be homogeneous or differentiated. You can have marginal costs that differ across these products, but in the simplest form, we just assume that they have the same marginal cost. And the simplest example of this would be there's two sellers um, who sell a particular variant, and V is basically the willingness to pay of consumers uh, for, for this variant. Um, now, uh, another important ingredient of all this is fees, and this interacts with the, with, the, with the previous ingredient, which is the product space. So you can consider all sorts of fees that the platforms may charge, ad valorem fee F, unit fee T, a subscription fee, some kind of fixed fee. Um, and basically, because products differ in their potential profitability and they have marginal costs, these fees, when they are high, may preclude some third party sellers from actually entering the marketplace because they cannot profitably sell their products after having paid all the, all the fees. Therefore, the marketplace, when it sets its fees, faces a trade off between higher fees, which is good because you make more money, but fewer sellers because some sellers cannot afford to pay these fees. So as a, I mean, uh, we, have, we have a result in the paper that shows that uh, the ad valorem fee is the best way to resolve this, um, this trade-off. And therefore, uh, we only focus on the ad valorem fee um, and proceed. And this is kind of realistic that in that most marketplaces set ad valorem fees these days. So now, um, 
let me talk about why you would run a vertically integrated market marketplace uh, as opposed to being just a retailer right amazon was a retailer before it became a marketplace so the question is why would amazon do this all um in the paper we with andres we provide a couple of reasons one of them is uh, capacity constraint we say that the retailer may not be able to supply all available all possible products that could be supplied on the on the storefront and k is the fraction of these products that it can actually do which is that we think is realistic because although amazon is a is a giant it only supplies a small fraction of all the possible products that are sold on the website so seemingly there's some constraint on um, on what amazon can do uh, we introduce another important constraint, which goes back to copying uh, discussions that were uh, held previously, and I'll, I'll contribute to this by assuming that the the uh, the retailer, the, the the marketplace owner, the potential owner of the marketplace, may not be informed about all the products that could potentially be sold in the storefront. So theta denotes the fraction of products that the that the marketplace owner is uh, familiar with, assuming that some third party sellers know about all products so there is a third party sellers collectively have an informational advantage of, over the uh, over the marketplace owner okay so these are two constraints on the retailer that would push it to potentially open the um uh, the marketplace to third party sellers and here i i, I would I would um, anticipate the, the question by Patrick, which is, which is a fair question, and he asked to um, Andre, but applies here too. So you could think of a normal re retail world, a world where this K and theta are one. So, you know, you have a small storefront because you're, you are a physical store. It's not infinite. And you pretty much can handle anything that could be sold through the store. So K is a one or even more. And you are aware of most popular products, so theta is also one. So basically, we embed the traditional um, model as a special case here. Uh, another difference is actually that uh, the way the marketplace operates is that when you when uh, when it lets these uh, third-party sellers in to compensate for its deficiencies in capacity and knowledge, it collects fees and also information which the marketplace can use to copy these products that third party sellers bring of course the ones that the marketplace was not aware of without the third party sellers okay so that's kind of the the three reasons why you would run a marketplace well then uh, un unless there's a reason against this uh, would always happen and we have a big uh, fat uh, minus of running a marketplace which is that you expose yourself to competition to third party sellers which you didn't have to, because if you were to run your website as a retailer, you wouldn't have to compete with third party sellers on products that you yourself sell as a retailer. So that's kind of the, 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 the main downside of, of running a marketplace. So the, the model is pretty complicated because there's a fee, set, fee setting stage, then entry stage where third parties and the marketplace decide which products to sell. And then there's pricing stage which involves also steering. So, you know, there's, there's complicated stuff uh, in, the, in the paper. Uh, of course, I don't have time to talk about details here, but I'll kind of mention what the results come out of the model through the lens of policy proposals that have been floating around. And uh, Andre has, has spoken about basically most of them. So there's a bunch of reports that uh, describe these uh, marketplaces and they uh, highlight that self-preferencing is uh, is rampant and uh, and potentially very bad for for society and certainly bad for third party sellers because platform owners can basically steer consumers to the, towards their own offerings even if they don't the fact that the platform can steer consumers creates monopoly positions for sellers and then with high fees the platform can extract the the rents that these uh, steering uh, frictions create on the platform uh, from third-party sellers who appear to be uh, beneficiaries through, through high fees towards its, itself. Uh, as was mentioned uh, previously by Salvatore and others, uh, of course, the, the seller can harvest data from third-party sales and use it for its own good, and then eventually engage in unfair competition with high fees where you know, it's a, it has easy time um, under, um, undercutting the third-party competitors. So. Sorry, so what are the proposals? Well, one proposal that is 
has been around is to reduce uh, steering or make it more transparent or do something uh, along these lines. In our model, it simply uh, can be analyzed as a reduction in lambda, so fraction of consumers who are susceptible to steering. And what we find is that actually, if you reduce lambda, what's going to happen is that the, the equilibrium fee will go up, welfare will fall, and consumer surplus may also fall, although you can construct cases where it increases. The bottom line is that steering, which is translated into self-preferencing by, by the platform, is one way for the platform to tax the, uh, the marketplace, to extract uh, surplus from the marketplace. If you reduce this possibility for the platform, the platform responds by increasing the fee because you have changed the cost benefit analysis of how many third party sellers I want to be in the marketplace versus how much money I make out of the marketplace. So basically you hit the platform here, the platform responds uh, by, by increasing the fee there. Very similar result uh, can be found when you ask yourself, what happens if I reduce the platform's ability to copy competitors? Again, the fee goes up, uh, consumer surplus falls, uh, and welfare mostly falls, but may increase, but that's, uh, that's quite unclear. So uh, I will emphasize here that the consumer surplus falls not only because the fee went up, which leads to higher third-party prices, but also because, as was emphasized by, uh, by Andre before, what we call copying can also be called competition. So you, by reducing so-called copying, you're reducing competition between third-party sellers and the, and the platform, although it's not the best kind of competition you can imagine because they're self-preferencing and whatnot, but still it's competition that are, when withdrawn results in you know, higher prices and consumers not being particularly happy. So um, a structural remedy that has been proposed is to ban the hybrid model and here, um, my results are quite similar to, to Andre's in that, uh, first of all, this may lead to the platform closing the marketplace, which is an unmitigated disaster for everybody in the model. But even if the platform responds by closing its own retail operations and just keeping the marketplace, the consumer surplus still falls because remember, competition is reduced when you withdraw such a, such a, uh, such a big seller from, uh, from the marketplace. The fee tends to increase, which again leads to uh, welfare losses. So uh, to conclude about vertically integrated uh, marketplaces, basically we go arrive to the following conclusion. We arrive to the conclusion that the simply the most reasonable way to regulate a platform like this is by regulating the fee, because the problem is the monopoly position that the platform has vis-a-vis -vis consumers in our model, which is by assumption, but you know there are reasons why this assumption is, is valid. Uh, and it charges a monopoly price on this access, which is the fee. And we find that if you reduce the fee, indeed consumer surplus improves, the welfare tends to improve. And if the fee is zero, both are maximized. Well, this is great news. So let's, let's regulate the fee, but we have to be careful that the platform, because it's a hybrid uh, uh, animal, if the fee regulation is very aggressive, may respond by simply closing the marketplace. So we, the model tells us that the best way forward is to regulate the fee, but be careful that the marketplace is not closed as a result. So um, I have something like one minute. So maybe I just mentioned that uh, in, the, in the new project with Heskey, we kind of um, dig deeper into what happens um, when the marketplace uses steering algorithms or auctions vis-a-vis uh, -vis third party sellers. And what we find is that both of these are actually pretty anti-competitive. Kind of the intuition of both is that in both cases, the, the winner of the, uh, of, the steering, uh, of the steering process, be it through the algorithm or through the auction, is the one who values the most to be steered towards consumers. And this firm tends to be the more expensive firm, okay? So as a result, even ex post, steering creates uh, problems for consumers and also creates incentives to increase prices ex ante. So both of these forms of steering are, um, are pretty bad. We've, we can characterize when the platform prefers one to the other. And again, we find something that's similar to the previous results, which is that if you reduce the fee, if you, um, if you regulate the fee, the, the platform may switch to the auction 
uh, as the better way to extract surplus, but that could be uh, very bad for consumers. So uh, since I'm out of time, as you can hear, um, let me stop on the summary slide, but basically I, I think I, I got across the, the main messages. Perhaps also stop the scratch, uh, uh, screen sharing. Absolutely. Thanks a lot, Sandro. Okay, here we go. Um, you mentioned as a, a negative uh, element from a viewpoint of a platform opening up a marketplace that uh, it exposes itself to competition. Uh, so I understand that it does so by uh, creating this marketplace, but from an overall perspective, I'm not sure whether that is necessarily something negative for the platform, because in a way, it's also a promise to consumers uh, that, well, at least well, depending on the level of the fees, uh, that it is open <clears throat> for some intra-platform competition and therefore may provide an attractive place to be. Uh, Absolutely. What's your view on this? Uh, that's a, that's an excellent point. In fact, in the long, kind of longer version of my presentation, uh, there's another plus from the marketplace in the in, in the in the slide, which which roughly reads something like, "This may uh, encourage consumers to come to the platform." It could be because it basically it's a commitment to lower prices because there's competition to be had, and there are some older models about on a shopping mall kind of economics, which is very similar in this regard that when when you locate next to your competitor, basically you encourage consumers to come because they know that you know you cannot possibly have very high prices because there's competition there. But, uh, you know, our model basically completely abstracts from the consumer side of this. So we just assume that there's a certain number of consumers that are monopolized by the platform and there's nothing you can do about about them. But yeah, it, it's an absolutely valid uh, valid point that uh, in fact i guess we could uh, incorporate uh, into the model but at the moment we have we haven't done so uh, towards the end of your presentation you also talked about fee regulation uh which i guess for some people who have been working in the regulation of some uh, network industries this sounds pretty similar to some kind of Excess price regulation. Um, so, is that your proposal? Should we think about it, or it's just uh, something which is kind of discussed, and therefore you're also looking at it in your paper? Uh, so, it is of course discussed, but we came to it rather from looking at other proposals that are around and finding that they would backfire elsewhere, and they would usually backfire through a higher fee. And then we uh, kind of took a step back and realized that indeed, so we have a monopolist who has, uh, I mean, in the model it's by assumption, but through network effects, one could uh, argue that there's, uh, you know, there's always some monopoly power in these two-sided uh, markets. Although of course uh, you, you have a very nice paper where you show that there could be multiple platforms, but they, they still have monopoly power. So there's a monopolist of what? Monopolist of access to consumers. And what is the price that this monopolist charges is the fee. So it's natural if you if you have a you know, natural monopoly of some kind to try to regulate what's wrong with it, which is the excessive price in this case the the fee. So uh, actually, uh, it's a little bit um, the other way around. I'm I'm quite optimistic in a way because although lots of proposals were floating around regarding the ban on the hybrid mode and copying and steering and all sorts of stuff. It seems that now most of the energy out there is going towards uh, fees. And in fact, Apple, for example, and possibly others kind of preemptively are reducing their fee because I guess they realize that, you know, that's where the action is gonna be. So they don't want to, the fee to be reduced to 10% and they kind of anticipate this and they reduce it to 15% in their, in their app store. So in a way kind of, you know, our model informed us that that seems to be the most fruitful way to regulate the marketplace without big downsides. And also it seems that the, the real life action is going in that direction, which is, a, which is kind of good news. Thank you, Sandro.